Today I'm going to talk about stopping the line and how you can implement it in your team. What is it about stopping the line that even makes our colleague Peter Antman sing about it? Back in the early 20th century, when Mr. Toyota, the founder of the Toyota Corporation, invented his automatic looms, one of the inventions was that if a thread broke in the loom, it would automatically stop. That was one of the first, if not the first, example of stopping the line. So imagine a car manufacturer. Uh, a car manufacturer has several assembly lines. In one end you have the parts of the car that goes in and in the other end the, the whole car comes out. So if a problem happens during the assembling of the car, the team has the possibility of stopping the line by pulling a handle. Why? Well, that's because that they know that if they deliver a car with bugs to the market, that that will come back and bite them in the, well, the behind. So they stop the line because they know that the bad will from the customers, the lowered reputation of the brand, the withdrawal costs of all the cars is so much bigger than to just fix the problem when it occurs. So how will we implement this in software development? Well, you need to understand that this is about change and change is hard. But the change will be for the better. Why? Well, it's because that stopping the line has several positive benefits. Increased quality in the product. You will eventually reduce the number of bugs. You will have reduced process waste because you don't have to estimate the bugs or prioritize the bugs. You will have a more reliable delivery pace. So how do you start? Well, as with every decision, everybody on the team needs to be on board. So I recommend using a consensus vote. So somewhere along on your, on your scrum board, you normally have working agreements put up. And adopting stopping the line is another working agreement. So if you get consensus on doing this, put up a new working agreement that says stop the line. Consider your standard sprint. Here's your scrum board. And we have four different user stories here with their tasks. And we have three different pairs working on, on their user stories. So let's say that during testing of, uh, of one of these tasks, they, they find a bug. So what do you do? Well, you don't file a bug report in your, in your bug reporting system. No, instead you talk to the developers and you put up a little note, a little post-it, a little sticky that says, okay, we got the bug here. So what happens next? Well, as soon as practically possible, these two, they stop the line, they stop what they're doing, and they start working on the sprint bug instead. And as soon as they fix the bug and verify it with automatic tests, they continue where they were before and they put the bug to done. Oh my God, someone's found a bug in production. What do we do now? Well, this is of course where we have to stop the total line. This is the most important thing to fix. So this has the highest priority and must go to the top of the scrum board. So now we have to fix a new swim lane for the bugs in production. So who's going to fix the bug in production? Whose line should we stop? Well, preferably we stop the line of those who's working with the least prioritized user story. But if that's not possible, really any pair can work on it. Because you know, it's more important to fix the bug in production than to put more features in an all, already malfunctioning system. A good practice is to note the date when the bug occurred. So just write the start date when it came to your board. And then when it's done, note the end date. So this started on the 15th and ended on the 16th. So you have one day lead time. Measure this lead time on your bugs in production at least, because minimizing this lead time will save you a lot of money. Okay, so that's it. That was uh, one simple but yet powerful example of how you can implement stop the line techniques in your team. In the beginning, we talked about the positive effects that this will have on both your team and your system. Things like a bug tracking tool or endless discussions on where to put a bug in your product backlog. All those things will diminish over time and if you're lucky, even disappear. By just focusing on fixing the bugs and instead of doing other things, your system will simply get better 
and your users will be happier. And if that's not important, I don't know what is. I gladly take your questions and feedback, so please don't hesitate to contact me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for your time.